a super califragilistic espialidocious day to all of our children. We are delighted that you've tuned in to Mount Tabor's Virtual Summer Academy, designed especially for our children ages 5 through 12. Each day, we have a special treat planned for you. Get ready to be inspired and educated. We'll help you tap into that creative side, show you how to be safe at home, and of course, get those bodies moving. Oh, we're so excited to get started. So why don't you help me with the countdown? In three, two, and one. Now that we are staying at home, many of the 
us decided if we were going to take a bath. I hope you took that bath. Then, there are important choices that you have to make. When school reopens, you will have to decide if you will do your homework or face the consequences. When your parents ask you to do something, you must decide if you are going to obey your parents or face the consequences. There is a very important choice that each of us have to make. That choice is, are you going to obey and serve God or not? Remember, when you know what the scripture says, it makes it easier to make the right choice. Joshua told the children of Israel that they must choose for themselves whom they would serve, but he and his house have made the choice to serve the Lord. Let us learn that scripture. So, when we are faced with a decision, because we have the mind of Christ, the decision that we make will please God. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15, which is our memory verse for today, says, Choose for yourself whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us put some motion to that to help us remember it. Hold the pointing finger of your left hand. Using the thumb and the pointing finger of your right hand, pull on the pointing finger of your left hand. As you say, choose for yourself. Choose for yourself. Hold both palms up and rub them back and forth while saying, this day whom you will serve. Make a circle with your index finger and your thumb. Hold them together, then make a circle with both hands. As for me and my house. Hold your right hand with palms facing forward. Bring it to your left shoulder and down to your right waist. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Let us do that again with all of the actions. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Last time with all the actions, Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Excellent. Remember the scripture and use it every time you have a choice to make. Ask yourself, will I be serving the Lord if I do this? If not, don't do it. Until next time. Let us pray. O oh God our Father, the creator and the sustainer of all mankind, I pray today for the children of our country and children around the world. I ask right now for your divine protection over all of our children from the hands of evil men. I pray that even in their childlike state, they would find the opportunity to focus on you as they focus on their future. Now I pray, O oh God our Father, that as they prepare to head back into the classroom or back to school in a few days, in a few weeks, that you would order their footsteps. Keep them safe on the streets. Keep them safe on the campus. Cover their minds. Guard their young spirits. And I pray, O oh God our Father, that you would anchor their future now and cause them to grow up, to be responsible citizens of their country, making meaningful contribution to the well-being of humanity. And now, Lord, I pronounce a blessing on children everywhere, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Greetings, children. As you prepare to listen in for our story of the day, here are some clues to listening. In the words of Margaret Fuller, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. All of you listening today are leaders of tomorrow. Our reading of today will focus on the skill of choices. Good readers use what they already know to help them understand the story they are reading. They think about what they already know about the topic. This can include what they have heard, remembered, or experienced. As you listen to today's story, think about what you already know about choices and consequences. Have you heard those words before? Do you remember having consequences for a choice you made in the past? Well, as you listen to the story today, use those memories to help you make sense of the story. Remember, good readers always use what they already know to help them make sense of the story. Enjoy! Your reader for today is Her Excellency Alma Adams, former Bahamian diplomat and first female ambassador for the Bahamas to Cuba. Hello, my name is Alma Adams and I'm so delighted to share with you a wonderful story for children. Teach your dragon to understand Consequences by Steve Herman. Hi, my name's Drew, and I have something you've not seen. It's a dragon of my own, but don't worry, he's not mean. I call him Diggory Doo. He's a very special pet. In fact, I bet he's just about the best pet you can get. When you have a dragon, there are lessons he must learn, like not to lose his temper, then look for stuff to burn. A dragon must learn manners and how to be polite. So I had to teach my dragon how to always do what's right. Thank you. Please. Once Diggory Doo had a glass of milk and spilled some on the floor. I said that he should mop it up. But Diggory asked, what for? It's just a little puddle. It's hardly much at all. I'm sure no one will notice a mess that is so small. Diggory ate some candy once, but then when he was through, he dropped the wrapper on the ground. A bad thing to do. It's just one piece, said Diggory Doo. I bet no one will see it. I'm sure that no one even cares. I can guarantee it. Diggory loves the swings and slides, but hates to wait his turn. He used to try to cut in line. I told him he must learn that he should hold his horses till the other kids are done. It's no big deal, said Diggory Doo. I'm just having fun. Diggory Doo stole some bubble gum when he was at the store. I told him, that is so bad. Don't do that anymore, he said. I took only one piece. I'm sure nobody saw. I don't know why you're so upset when I broke one little law. Diggory skipped his homework once. He didn't want to do it. Diggory do, I told him. This time, I think you really blew it. For goodness sake, said Diggory do. What difference does it make? I just skipped homework once. 
so I could take a little break. Diggory do? I asked my dragon, have you not ever heard that choices come with consequences? You need to learn this word. Consequences are results of choices, choices that we make. Sometimes they help us see when we have made a big mistake. For instance, when we make a mess, it's not too hard to see. If no one cleans their messes, what a big mess that would be. And when you litter just a bit, you know you should admit it. What a dirty world we'd have if everybody did it. Mm. When you cut in line, you know that it is rude. Now think about it. What if everyone does the same thing to you? When you take things you shouldn't, or don't do what you should, then how can people trust you? Diggory, that's not very good. Here's a lesson, Diggory do, that everyone must learn. Every choice a person makes will come back in return. When you have a choice to make, then here's what I suggest. Think of consequences, then choose to do what's best. For instance, think of others first. I think that you will find that you'll get the best results when you choose to do what's kind. And when you have a choice to make about what you will do, imagine if everyone made the same choice too. So be careful of the choices that you have to make each day. For when you choose to do what's right, then good things come your way. Just picture for a moment, if we all chose to agree to always make good choices. What a fine world this would be. It has been my pleasure. Hi, I'm Dr. Kenneth Romer and welcome to another motivational segment. I want to sing one of my favorite songs. Do you want to hear me sing? I heard some of you say yes and some of you are saying no. But I'm gonna sing anyway. My favorite song, one of them is Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Another one is Be wish you a Merry Christmas. Be wish you a Merry Christmas. I know it's not Christmas and it might not be a birthday. But I love those songs, do you know why? Because oftentimes during the Christmas and the birthday, persons give me gifts. I love receiving gifts. What about you? Do you like receiving gifts? Maybe it's the Christmas gift or birthday gifts or graduation gifts. Like there were so many who did not have the chance to graduate in a big ceremony this year. We feel so sorry for them. What about unexpected gifts? Gifts that just come from out of nowhere. Aren't they the ones that give you the most surprise? Gifts. Well, today, the value that we are going to be focusing on is really called choices. Choices. Come and sit with me on the count of three. 
one, two, three choices. One more time. This time really loud. One, two, three choices. You sound great. A choice is, is an act of picking between two or more possibilities or outcomes. You can choose whether you want to wear a blue pants or a brown pants. You can choose whether you want to eat vanilla ice cream or Junkanoo ice cream. You can choose whether you want to have a good attitude or a bad attitude, a friend or an enemy. Because a choice is an act of picking between two or more outcomes or possibilities. John Maxwell says it this way, one of the greatest gifts you will ever receive is the gift to make choices. Value choice as a gift. Now, what is the value of making good choices? There was a choice you have to make in everything you do. So keep in mind that in the end, the choices you make makes you. John Wooden said that is a wonderful little poem. There is a choice you have to make in everything you do. So keep in mind that in the end, the choices you make makes you. Everything in your life is a reflection of the choices you have made. Even though there are some things in your life that you have no choice over. For example, you do not choose the color of your skin. You do not choose your parents. You do not choose, in many cases, where you live. Your parents perhaps made those choices for you. But yet, everything in your life is a reflection of the choices you have made. So today, I will make good choices that positively affect me. I want to start a choice challenge. What are we going to start today? A choice challenge. Now there are so many challenges all over the internet. Some are good and some are just like crazy and kind of weird. But today, we're going to start a choice challenge. How is this going to work? What choice can I make today that will have a positive impact on my life? What choice are you going to make today? All of you make one choice. Maybe the choice could be cleaning your room or cooking your parents a meal. Maybe the choice could be asking Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to be your Lord and your Savior and your forever friend. Maybe your choice could be to eat more vegetables, to pray more, to read your Bible more. What choice can you make today that will have a positive impact on your life? Choices are the best way to change your life but it starts with you if you get better your life will get better i'll say that again if you get better your life will get better there was a little poem i loved when i was in school a teacher made me say it, and I chose to listen. It went like this. Good, better, best. I'll never let it rest until my good gets better and my better best. I'll say it again. Good, better, best. I'll never let it rest. 
until my good gets better and my better best. Becoming the best version of yourself starts with the choices that you make. So every day, I make three choices. And I hope that you would make them too. The first choice I make every day is I choose to value people. When others are thinking bad of people, I want to think good of them. I want to make them feel special. First choice is I value people. The second choice I make every day is I make myself more valuable. Maybe reading on a way to do something better or asking my parents or adults, in your case, for good advice or praying more or asking God, God, how can I become better today? Every day, I make myself more valuable. And then the third choice I make every day is I choose to do things that make other people valuable. And sometimes those things are not difficult things. It might be sharing a kind word. It might be saying, you look beautiful today. Oh, you look splendiferous. It's another big word that simply says, you look good. Or oh, I appreciate you being my friend. Mom, dad, auntie, uncle, cousin, pastor, an adult, I thank you for how you have been working to keep me safe during these lockdowns. When you make those kinds of choices, you do things to make other people feel valuable. So let's reflect. That means we're going to think back in our minds. What choice can I make today that will have a positive impact on others today? In what areas do I need to improve? Can you make the choice to improve your life today? Our challenge. What is one daily choice that I can make that will have a positive impact on my friends and family? Hi kids, this is Kumbi. Actually, Uncle Kumbi. And I want to welcome you to MTC Virtual Summer Academy. I'm excited to be with you today and I know you're excited to be with me. I can feel your energy already. So I want you to get yourself together. We're about to have a time of your life, all right? We're not just here to work out, but we're here to have fun. We're here to get active. We're here to move and groove and just enjoy yourself. Kids, I don't know about you, but I love my culture. And I love it because it gets me moving and it's effortlessly. So I want to introduce you today to Junkanoo. And trust me, once you hear the Junkanoo music, you're going to be inspired to get moving. So right now, we're about to take this Junkanoo rush downtown to Bay Street. Are you with me? I know you are. Let's do this. And the first move we're going to get into is called Open the Gate. That's right. It's going to be a simple movement of hand and knee raises. And I'm sure anyone can do it. Even you. So all right, work at your own pace and remember to have a good time. We rushing now. Here we go. Hey kids, look at you. You guys are doing extremely well. I mean, I'm feeling you through this camera and I'm sure you're feeling me. But we're gonna keep jamming, keep moving. And this next section is called the reach. This is where I expect you to reach for your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. And you know what you've been dreaming when you grow up? You want to be this police officer, this, this minister. You want to be something great, but we have to reach for it. Okay? So let's start reaching. And remember, let's keep moving. Thank you. 
That was amazing. You did extremely well with that first move. You sure did open the gate. We're gonna, we're gonna get into the second move, okay? It's called We Coming. Now with this one, you're gonna look to your partner on the left or the right and let them know We Coming, all right? They gotta feel you. And this is simple. We're just gonna be moving the waistline. You remember the hula hoop days? It's all in your waist, all right? So it's really simple. Just keep your eyes on me and remember, have a good time.
there you have it. That was our junk in a rush. You actually been to Bay Street with me. You had a good time? Let me know, because I sure did. And I'm feeling you right now. You are ready for whatever life throws at you. So until next time, one thing I want you to do is keep moving. What is social distancing and why do we need to do it? Social distancing basically means stay at home. And if you have to leave your house, stay at least six feet away from other people at all times. Why? Because social distancing helps stop the spread of bad germs that make people sick. What is six feet? Picture a door laying down at your feet. Make sure that door is always between you and others. Social distancing is so important right now that you're not going to school, a lot of adults aren't going to work, there's no eating inside restaurants, and all sports have been canceled. We can't be physically close to others right now, but we can still do stuff with them. Don't give people hugs or high fives, but do send notes and drawings. Don't go to other people's houses or have people in your house, but do wave when you see them. We won't always have to do social distancing, but all of us need to do it right now. You can be a hero by keeping everyone safe with social distancing. A message from Cincinnati Children's. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you learned something new from the story or one of the activities that we did today. Don't forget to try out these skills with your parents and teach them to a friend. Well, we've had a lot of fun, but now it's time to run. Until next time, see you later, alligator. program has come to a conclusion, but have no fear, our call to action is here. What was your favorite part of today's program? Share it with us. Here are some ways you can. Draw a picture using beautiful colors, shapes, and characters. Or, write a brief journal entry describing your favorite part. Or, Take a picture of something in your environment that highlights your favorite part of the program today. Or, dress up real cute or handsome. Use your parents' phone and send us a video describing how much fun you had. These calls to action help us to know that you're engaged, watching, participating, and enjoying the program. Once you're done, submit them to us by email at socialmedia at mounttable.org or by WhatsApp at 242-376-9338.